Welcome to Horror Boys. It's a podcast on the internet. I'm Austin, joined as always by Chris. And we are the Horror Boys. And this isn't any old podcast on this old internet. No, 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 my friends. This is a horror movie review podcast where every week, forever, we will review a horror movie. Wait, what's that? I'm getting word from my notes. We're not reviewing a horror movie today. Yeah. Um, today we are reviewing um, my Brave uh, Little Toaster. Uh, oh, uh-huh. no, no. Okay. Just got word in my headset. That is wrong. We are continuing our Chucky coverage uh, by talking about the Chucky TV show. Um, Whoa. Yeah, so for the next eight weeks, you're going to get us talking about two episodes of the Chucky TV show a week instead of a whole movie. It's the same amount yeah. of content, basically. It's not, yeah, nothing's changed. <laughs> yeah, about the same runtime as yeah. a movie. Yep. I think the longest ends up coming out to like less than 100 minutes, which is, we've definitely covered movies that are longer than that. <laughs> By quite a bit, yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's jump right into this bad boy. Um, today, well, the first half of today, I'll have to talk about both. The first thing we're talking about today is Chucky Season 1, Episode 1. Death by Misadventure. Uh, it was written and directed by Don Mancini. Nothing, nothing new there. That's just, that's just. You know, I feel like every movie we talked about lately. Yep. Um, our producer, Andrew. Yeah, David Kirshner. Composer, Joseph Laduca. Been here since uh, I believe Curse. Uh, <laughs> we do have our director of photography, Colin Holt, is new to the team. Um, he's also worked on, uh, Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities. Hmm. Nice. Our production designer... Do we know which episode? Oh, I did. It's like three episodes. I don't remember which ones. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's fair. Um, produ- he, production designer is the returning Craig Sandals. Um, special effects makeup by Francois Dungeness. Of The Blob, Land of the Dead, The Dawn of the Dead remake, Hannibal, The the Vich, It Chapter 2, and Saw 2 through Spiral. So, you know, every uh-huh. Saw after the original. <laughs> Anything that has any yeah. connection to Saw, this man has been involved with doing the makeup. <laughs> nice. Um, our animatronic characters and effects are by Tony Gardner and Alterian Inc. Our, he also does puppeteering as well. Um, I don't know if he is the lead puppeteer. I believe our lead puppeteer might is P- the returning Peter Peter A. Chavaco was I believe was what he on IMDb he was credited as lead puppeteer. I don't know the exact. I think it is still Tony Gardner's team. I don't know how the exact, but yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, we also have. Um, returning Pamela Ivetta. Uh, we have three new puppeteers for this episode. Um, we have Eric Burke, Steve Newburn of Suicide Squad, The Thing, Carrie, Cabin Fever 2, Blade 2, Scooby Doo 2, Santa Claus 2, Men in Black 2. Oh my god. And is a horror boy alum for his work on Hereditary. Ah, oh, I thought you were going to say Jack Frost too. No, I wish. I got uh, excited. <laughs> and lastly, we have Gord Robertson of TMNT 2 and 3, Santa Claus 2, It Chapter 2, Spiral, The Thing. Excuse me. A lot of Muppet work, including 96 episodes of Fraggle Rock. And, to me, most importantly, he was Zaboomafu. Uh, (laughs) Sick. Yeah. There was also a lemur that I can't remember his name. I think Julian. But, uh, who has sadly passed away. Rest in peace, Zaboomafu lemur. Uh, (laughs) All right, But, uh, yeah, he was the puppet Zaboomafu. So, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the end of our pre-notes for now. And, and, well, yeah. yeah we'll episodes. have mid-pre-notes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for the first time ever. Yeah, and, but not for the last time ever. 
Uh, we open with a POV shot of someone watching a woman brush her hair. And then we, then we transition to a shot of Chucky at a yard sale. Fun little fact. There is a person who walks by the camera who is wearing a very familiar red coat and hair covering um, that is supposed to be Tiffany. Huh. Explaining possibly why maybe Chucky is here at this yard sale. Um, 14 year old Jake Wheeler haggles Miss Jolly down to buying the doll that she doesn't know where it came from, down to just $10. Jake Wheeler is played by Zachary Arthur. Miss Jolly is played by Precious Chong of Pearl Harbor, alongside Horror Boy alums Andrew Brunerski, uh, who is in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the remake, uh, Josh Hartnett of The Faculty, and not just Horror Boy alum, but Chucky alum, Beth Grant, who was in Child's Play 2. Yeah, so that's that's Precious Chong. She was in that. She was in Pearl Harbor, which apparently Pearl Harbor is you know trying to be the next. Uh, what's the? Is it, She's all that. It's the movie that has like fifty horror yeah. alums in it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. So uh, as Jake walks away, uh, Miss Jolly realizes that a butcher knife was taken from a knife set. <gasps> oh my gosh! What happened? Did Chucky take it? Yes. Yeah. 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 He did. <laughs> Uh, Jake listens to a podcast about Hackensack, New Jersey called Hack and Slash, Slash. hosted by Devin Evans, who I will tell you now is played by, uh, Bjorgvin Anderson. That's a pretty rough name to announce. Yeah. Um, on this episode of the podcast, uh, he talks about how the murder rate is up, and the last time it was up was the Ray family murders back in 1965 that spawned the serial killer, Charles Lee Ray. Ray. Whoa. Whoa. Ah! That's Chucky's name. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's for those kind of, of you like, tuning in just for this, you know, yeah. ah, Chucky. TV series. <laughs> podcast review uh jake takes chucky up to his room uh where he has creepy doll sculptures and a cat named binks uh binks messes with chucky so we see his pupil dilate before binks yelps and runs off we don't kind of we don't see what chucky does but it's implied that chucky like hit the cat or something <laughs> yeah. um Jake uh, can't rip off Chucky's head, so he grabs a pocket knife. Um, we see Chucky's hand start to move, preparing to, you know, fight back if he needs to. But before Jake uh, can try to remove the head, um, Jake's dad, Luke, comes home from work. Luke Wheeler is played by Devin Sawa of Idle Hands and Final Destination, alongside Horror Boy alum, the National Treasure, Tom- Tony Todd. Uh, yeah. That's the original National Treasure. No offense, Matthew Lillard. We love you, but Tony Todd had that moniker from us first. <laughs> yeah. Or Nicolas Cage's National Treasure. No, no, no. That's not... No. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, Chucky spooks Jake with a good guy voiced, Hey, wanna play? The good guy voice is now voiced by Nick A. Fisher of Dahmer. A monster the Jeffrey Dahmer story because for some reason they had to throw the word Dahmer in there twice really awkwardly yeah <laughs> well you wouldn't want to be confused that it was you know Dahmer not not a Dahmer story well I mean they could have just called it monster the Jeffrey Dahmer story but instead it's Dahmer then the next line monster colon the Jeffrey Dahmer story like that's the title it's a really stupid uh, but he does play the, yeah. the, ki- the kid who plays the good guy voice also plays young Jeffrey Dahmer <laughs> so I guess he's just really into playing uh, killers uh, <laughs> This little child uh, yeah. um, Luke is disappointed that Jake brought home another doll Chucky says, hi, I'm Chucky and I'm your friend till the end Heidi ho ha 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 Which I was very happy that they brought back the full line I believe it was in Curse where they 
truncated it down and it pissed me off. You can go back to that episode to see it happen. <laughs> wow. I'm also really happy that we have like a credit for who it is who did the good guy voice, because I'm pretty sure Curse, it changed, and I have no idea who did it in Curse and Cult. And now I do, for this one at least. And I think it's a different one again, so... Thanks for letting me be able to credit the person who did the work. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, uh, Heidi ho, ha ha ha. Uh, Jake asks his dad for his opinion on his sculpture. Um, Luke first tries to just kind of go, I don't kind of not want to give an answer, but eventually says it's cool. Uh, but he thinks Jake is spending too much time on it. And should be out asking a girl to a movie or hanging out with friends. Uh, Jake says, friends come and go, but his work lasts forever. Luke replies, so do student loans. And how it doesn't pay the bills. And how he had to pay the bills for Jake's dead mother, who was also an artist. Uh, Luke informs Jake he can't afford to send him to art camp. And reminds him to take his pill, presumably an anxiety pill, uh, because his aunt, uncle, and cousin are coming over for dinner. Mm. Also, I would like to scold you for not making a Jake's mother joke I there. I did, I'm sorry. Uh, I... Yeah, you really missed that. I'm sorry. Hopefully I don't have another one planned in the script somewhere later where I might have noticed it and didn't notice that one. Uh -oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, wow. Uh, we then get our title card. Woo! But th and this time, I'm actually really happy we've been bringing up when the title cards happen because uh, there's something really cool about the Chucky series is each uh, title card per episode is slightly different. Like, it's the same font, but the font is made up of something different. Uh, this episode, yeah. it's made of doll parts. Woo! Doll parts. Yeah. Uh, we that come back cool. to dinner where we meet Junior, Bree, and Logan. Uh, Jake's cousin, Junior, is played by Tio. Briones, Bree is played by Horror Boy alum Lexa Doug, who was the final girl Rowan in Jason X. Mm. Yeah, and L L I think she was the final girl. She was definitely like the girl who like got froze, and I think she ended up surviving to the end. I honestly, I haven't seen that movie since you know about this time last year. So yeah. I thought she looked familiar, but I was yeah. like, I. Don't know if I have seen her Jason in anything. X. She was in Jason X, so you have seen her. And oh. Logan Wheeler is Luke's twin, so he's played by Devin Sawa. And uh, right. also, I'll just real quick here before we even get into the scene, because uh, once the scene starts, I'll want to talk about what's happening in the scene. But a real huge credit to Devin Sawa. I mean, huge credit to all the actors. Honestly, I think most of them do a really good job. But Devin Sawa, especially, like playing two completely different characters in the same scene. Like, and, like, does a really good job making them feel like different characters. Like, that's a lot of work. And, you know, props to him. Yeah. Um, uh, dinner gets awkward real quick uh, when Logan tries to offer Luke out. He tried to offer him, like, financial help, which Luke seems offended by as he pours a second glass of whiskey. Uh, Bree tries to change the subject by bringing up how Junior made regionals in cross-country. Uh, Junior says he won't be able to go because of a scout's commitment. And Logan says he already made Eagle Scout, so it doesn't matter. But he does need a third extracurricular if he wants to get into Harvard. And at this point, we see that Logan is putting too much pressure on Junior. <laughs> also, a little bit. it's the first example of one of the few, spoiler, uh, flaws I feel like this series definitely has is I don't think they understand what a 14-year-old is. Um, it is technically possible for a 14-year-old to be Eagle Scout, but it's a very rare case. Typically, it's 15 to 17. Like, it's it's a stretch to make it happen. It can, but there is a lot of times where in this movie, where I, or this show, throughout the whole oh, show, where I go, yeah. why, why are they not just in high school? It would be easier to explain a lot of their actions and the things they do. And here's the thing. I do think actually a lot of the actors are like 13 and 14, so I guess maybe... They're playing their own age, just... And hey, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I don't know what middle school's like anymore. Maybe this is the middle school that exists that leads to, like, Euphoria High School. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it does feel a little bit strange. Um, uh, yeah. It, it does feel like all of 
well, not all of it, but a lot of the situations that they're in are like situations that 16 or 17 year olds yeah, would not, maybe be in. Tip, not typically, you know, 14 year olds. Yeah. Maybe 15 if, you know, maybe Jake's younger than the people he knows. There's a chance. We don't, I don't know if we ever hear other people's ages. So there's a chance they're 15. But. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Freshmen and sophomores in high school, but they're not. They're in, they're in middle school. We do see the name of the middle school later. Uh, <laughs> they're fourteen year old middle schoolers. I don't know. I mean, they're in middle school. That's crazy. I believe they they mentioned being. There's a point later in this episode where there is a mention of an eighth grade teacher, um, and it's also they go to Perry Middle School or something like that. I didn't write down the name of the middle school because I didn't think it was going to come up. <laughs> but yeah, I just want to point out that that is one of the flaws that I think the show definitely has is they don't know what. Uh, middle schoolers are. Yeah. Eh, here's the thing. I'll be honest. It doesn't really draw me out of it that much, but it is an element of going like, wait, they're supposed to be middle school? Every once in a while I have that moment where I go, hey, hold up. They're middle schoolers? Yeah. I wasn't having this yeah. kind of life in high school. Uh <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah, no, I mean, yes, but... Um, but yeah, so, back to this plot. Uh, Junior tells Jake that the scouts are taking gays now, so he should come check it out. Um, Jake retorts, asking if he, uh, sold the most cookies to, you know, make Eagle Scout. Um, Junior says that no, he actually organized a book drive for the homeless. Uh, <laughs> Jake points out how that's not what they need, like, at all. Uh, <laughs> yeah, which I thought was pretty funny. I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. There's something about the the homeless needing to yeah catch to up read, on Harry Potter uh, yeah yeah Harry Potter I was like ah pretty <laughs> good. Uh, Bree tries to change the discussion again by asking about Jake's sculpture. Uh, he says it will be done soon and explains where he gets the dolls, ending with the Andy Warhol quote: "Just because something has been thrown away doesn't make it garbage." Junior responds: "Wasn't Warhol gay too?" Uh, Bree tries to stop him. Uh, Junior says, what is the 21st century? It's cool to be gay now. Right, Jake? Because, you know, Junior, you know, is just, you know, trying to, you know, out his cousin at the table. Because that's, that's the cool thing. That's the, what cool kids do, I guess. Um, yeah. Uh, Bree and Logan try to talk about how it's not a non-issue, just like being left-handed or vegan. Um, <laughs> it's just, you know, part of who you are. Um, and, uh... True. Yes, <laughs> but uh, not not to Luke, because uh, he smashes his glass and says, give it a rest. He's 13 years old. He doesn't know what he is. Uh, Jake corrects him that he's 14. Yeah. This is also, yeah, I guess I really should have brought it up before. If you've made it this far into the podcast, uh, just trigger warning for, like, domestic abuse, and that's the big one. Um, but, yeah, just... Yeah, just trigger warning for yeah. that. If that's something that you might trigger you, hey, this probably isn't the show for you. Um, it's they're trying to tell some you know kind of real stories here. Um, so and they do cover some uncomfortable topics. Yeah. Um, somewhat based off of uh, Don Mancini's own life, I believe is what he said in interviews that you know the character of Jake is very much inspired by him and his life when he was growing up. Hmm. Not the getting killed, getting you know, chased by a killer doll. I don't think, oh, but okay. it would explain a lot of his writing. Okay. <laughs> uh, Bree excuses herself to go upstairs to the bathroom. Uh, she actually goes to Jake's room to make a call. She hears something in the closet, but only finds Chucky and a jump scaring Binks. Uh, she tells the person on the phone, "I really need to see you." Bum, bum. And that's all we get to know for now. Uh, Junior, Bree, and Logan leave with Jake seeing them off. Upstairs, Jake finds his dad destroying his sculpture with a bat. Uh, Drake, Jake tries to stop him and gets shoved into a dresser in like slow motion, but it's just its a really brutal scene. Uh, once again, this, if you've made it this far, once again, there's going to be a lot of really emotional scenes uh, that might be hard for you. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Luke says, no more dolls, Jake. And leaves. I think he, he says, like, no more dolls, Jake, ever, and then leaves. Um, Dr Jake cries at the wreckage and pulls Chucky out from under his bed and then finds a Binks, a, a Binks, finds a piece of Binks's <laughs> hair, uh, or fur. Um, 
It does look like it might be like matted in blood or something. Can't quite tell what he's supposed to be seeing there other than fur. Yeah, um, it looks kind of like he just ripped out a chunk of Binks. Yeah. Could be, yeah. But that's all we see is this little chunk right now. That's all we know about right now. Uh, we cut to the morning where Jake looks up how much good guy dolls go for, which is... Um, $1,500. Yeah, well, no. It's anywhere from $500 to $15. Yeah, but he does get very excited about the high end. But, you know, that's not how you know things like that work. If there is a low end, there's yeah. a very good chance that might all be... Which here's the thing. Hey, $500 is great for him because, you know, he doesn't have a lot. But, well, that also depends on the condition of the doll. Yeah, it, you know, the one who was going for $1,500 was in a box. I mean, I don't know if it was mint in box, but his is not at all, so... Yeah, his is just mint. Yeah, maybe. I mean, he, he does box. say mint later, but I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, he gets very excited about the amount of money it could technically go for, even though odds are his... Well, is he getting it graded? Like, what, what is this out of 10, you know... Yeah, I gotta send it into the PCA. Yeah, I think it's PSA, uh, isn't it? PSA, yeah. yeah. PS, is, this a, is this a PSA 10 or is this a PSA <laughs> like 5? I don't know. Oh, it's only Gem 8.5. Uh, it changes the price that he's gonna get on this doll on the secondhand mm, market. True. Uh, but, I'll drop that at by easily $300. Yeah. He'll be lucky if he can get that 500 you know? Uh, yeah, it's true. No, it's true. <laughs> uh, we head to uh, Jake on the school bus with Chucky. Everyone but Devin is, like, kind of teasing him. Uh, Jake then stares at Devin and is about to seem to get the courage to talk to him when Junior sits down and starts talking to Devin, so he doesn't talk to him. Yeah, because he's friends with his uh, jerk cousin. Uh, At school, we meet Junior's girlfriend, Lexi Cross, played by Olivia Allen Lind. Uh, Lexi hopes Jake isn't going to destroy Chucky, and when she finds out he plans to sell him, she starts to, like, fake care and offer to, you know, help get him some help and, like, get Junior to give him money right now. And she's like, oh, come on. Just, he's like, I don't carry cash. And she's like, oh, just Venmo him. Like, but, you know, you can tell there is definitely, there's a fakeness here. Yeah. She's being facetious. Yeah. Um... Uh, then they walk away, um, and while they're walking away, Lexi says she just got an amazing idea. Junior tries to tell her to give Jake a break, but she tells him not to go soft on her. Yeah. Uh, we head to science class. Woo, science class! Yay, science! Yeah, we're the like dissecting science. frogs! Woo, yeah! Oh. Yeah, yeah that wasn't know. my favorite thing to do. Also, just like, you know, these frogs are like, they're like alive frogs that like, because, like, the heart's like, ah, oh, it's definitely not humane. I mean, uh, if we're being real, I mean. <laughs> but, yeah, um, Jake tells his teacher, Miss Fairchild, uh, he can't uh, do it because he doesn't like the sight of blood. A kid named Oliver gives him crap, and Miss Fairchild immediately just puts Oliver in his place in a really fun moment, saying words that I cannot say on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And she also just kind of, like, encourages Jake, telling him, like, yeah, you can do it. Um, yeah, this is the the BA cool science teacher that yeah, you cool did teacher. not have growing up. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> Miss Fairchild is played by Annie Briggs. Oliver is played by Avery Estevez. Uh, Jake starts to starts the incision, but turns away at the blood. Uh, when he turns back, the frog has been like flayed open uh, by Chucky. Yeah, and yeah. it's. Kind of, like, artfully done. Yeah. They're, they're... Like, the organs are all, like, flayed out. Yeah, and a really in a very twisted, specific... disgusting art, yes. Which, you know, yeah. is the art you expect. It looks really cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, everyone in the class but Devin laughs at um, a notification they get. Um, it's Lexi's new GoFundMe to help raise money for Jake and Chucky. Yeah, because he's poor. <sighs> yeah, and Lexi's mean. Yeah, she sucks. Yeah, she really does. Uh, Jake asks Miss Fairchild to keep Chucky for him because it won't fit in his locker. Uh, Miss Fairchild keeps Lexi after class and tries to tell her to take down the page and gives her detention. Uh, Lexi says if she's punished in any way for the admirable charitable act she's doing, her parents will sue the school. 
Uh, Miss Fairchild leaves to go get the principal so she can, you know, say her threat to her. Um, we head to the lunchroom. Woo! I don't know what that was. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> where they're serving chili. Woo! Remember in Curse where they had chili? I guess. Yeah, it looks very similar, and I think it's definitely on purpose. Uh, <laughs> um, Jake is listening to Hack and Slash until Devin comes to sit with him. Uh, Jake lies and says he's watching Vampire Diaries. Devin asks Jake to come to the talent show the next day. He also tells him that he knows he's listening to his pod, listens to his podcast, and you know that he was literally just listening to it, not watching Vampire Diaries. And he asks him and to. Then he... hmm? Sorry. Oh, yep. No, you're good. Oh, uh, I was just gonna say he's gonna invite him onto his yeah. podcast because he so wants him to talk, talk about, about bullying, bullying. Uh, which uh, Jake gets kind of offended by because you know that means Devin thinks he's like the poster boy for losers, and he leaves. Which, in Devin's defense, he kind of is. Nothing against Jake, but he does get picked on by everyone for no reason. Yeah, but that still doesn't change the fact they might hurt it the first time. You know, this boy that, spoiler as it may look, it looks like he might have a crush on, is the first time he's ever talking to you is to try to be like, hey, you're a loser, be on my podcast, talk about how you're a loser. I mean... <laughs> I mean, that's definitely not what it is. But I could see why Jake would think that. <laughs> uh, we head back to Lexi, who drops her phone after Chucky laughs and is now in front of the door. Uh, Miss Fairchild comes in with Principal Megan McV McVeigh, but Lexi says she has to go and she'll take down the page and has to stop smoking weed before class. Uh, Principal McVeigh is played by... Jana Peck of The Toll and Letters to Satan Claus. Ah, cool. <laughs> yeah. Where she plays uh, uh, Satan slash Santa Claus. I thought that was also, cool. you know, 14 year olds, guys, remember. Smoking weed. I mean, maybe. Hmm. I don't know. Honestly, if it was just weed, I would be like, okay, maybe. But there's a lot of other things that these kids do where I go, yeah. I don't know about that one. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Agreed. And, um, you know, I guess there are 14 year olds that are probably even younger people out there who have probably. done that, I guess. But, you know, good old sheltered me. I'm like, ah, well, they would never, not at 14. Yeah. That's crazy. Once again, I do feel like there's an element of if they were just aged up to like 15 or 16, this would make a lot more sense, but. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I but, wouldn't question any of it. <laughs> but they didn't. Uh, yeah. But at the same point, though, like I already said, if in fantasy, you know, television worlds, there is a, um, you know, euphoria, high, you know, where the, those kids go to that high school, there has to be a middle school those kids went to, and apparently it's Perry Middle School or whatever it's called. <laughs> True. True. Uh, Miss Fairchild locks Chucky in a cabinet. Uh Jake has an. We head to Jake at his home where he has an inquiry about the doll and gives them his number. He immediately gets a call from Gusve. No, wait. No, it's, it's an not Ghostface. unknown caller. Aww. But it sounds um, very much like Andy Barkley, uh, played by the returning Alex Vincent. Um, and uh, yeah, fun fact here. Um, Alex Vincent went to Hackensack High School. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Random fun fact Ooh. that he went to Hackensack High School, and then you know this. this there's no Hack and Hack, Hackensack High School in this show, but you know they are in Hackensack. So, <laughs> no Hack and Hack. You know what? You can shut up. <laughs> um, okay. Andy, or we don't know yet, um, asks about the condition of the doll. He asks if the name's Chucky, and if there's anything weird that's happened with Chucky. Uh, Jake says that you know this call's pretty weird. Andy warns him to be careful and asks if he's checked his batteries. But Ooh. Andy has to hang up before he can explain what that means in any yeah. way. Um, Jake Googles good guy doll violence and finds articles about Child's Play 1 and 2 and opens an article about Andy saying Chucky did it. Bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. In the morning, Chucky goes to talk to his dad. 
But before he gets a chance to say whatever he wanted to say, uh, Luke reveals that Chucky was in the bathroom. And, you know, Jake takes him. And goes to check to see that he has no batteries. Oh my gosh, Chucky's a living doll? I'm shocked. That's crazy. <laughs> Who would have uh, thought that? Yeah, so he throws him in the trash. And it's over. That's the end of the story. And we have now two seasons of happy life. Yeah, no. no. Yeah. We head to the talent show where Devin is finishing his piano performance. Um, and fun fact about this, um, Devin was supposed to uh, sing, I believe it's Amer- I think it was America the Beautiful. I don't remember what. He was supposed to sing some sort of song. No, it wasn't America the Beautiful. I don't remember what it was. It wasn't that at all. It was uh, We Are the Champions. Don't know why I thought America the Beautiful would be in half a second. He was supposed to sing We Are the Champions. Um, but uh, the actor couldn't sing. Um, but he could uh-huh. actually play the piano, so he, they changed it to him playing the piano. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I really don't think that would have made a difference if he sang or not. No, no, it's not. Just fun fact that he actually is playing the piano here because he knows how to play the piano. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, Lexi is the MC of the um, talent show, and she asks uh, Devin... Wait, what? Oh, she asks Devin if his performance was for anyone uh, before saying she sees some familiar faces in the crowd. She starts with her mom, dad, and little sister. Her mom, Mayor Michelle Cross, is played by Barbara Allen Woods of Ghoulies 4 and is Olivia Lynn's actual mother. There, there we go. Yeah, it's a, they're actually mother and daughter. And they're getting to play mother and daughter. This is pretty cool. Uh, Huh. Yeah. Um, Her sister, Caroline, is played by uh, Corinna Batrick. Her father, Mr. Cross, is played by the returning but a new character, Michael Therialt. He played the psychiatrist in the the last of the Chucky movies. He was the horrible, evil monster psychiatrist who got killed. Um, she then points at Devin's mom, uh, Detective Evans. We don't know if she's a detective yet, but spoiler, she is. Uh, um, she is played by Rochelle Cassius of Clown in Channel Zero. Lexi uh, then turns her sights to Jake. And asks him about his thoughts on Devin's performance. Jake says it was good, and she tries to imply that he might have a stronger opinion. When a familiar voice pipes in. It's Chucky! Who is being voiced by the returning, amazing, Brad Dorf. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Um, Chucky tells her to pick on someone her, her own size... Uh, Chucky has Jake pick him up and whispers something to him. Um, after that, Jake uh, plays along that this is a ventriloquist act. Uh, Jake goes up on stage. Chucky says he's Jake's friend till the end. But nothing more than that. Not that there's anything wrong with that, you know, he adds. Because, you know, this is a more woke Chucky. Um, he then takes out Lexi's phone that he had apparently stolen earlier. Um, and says, I mean, we saw it fall, but we never saw him pick it up, is all I'm saying. Um, and says it, uh, the, she had a lot of pics of Junior and a lot of pics of Oliver in her phone. He then says, I oh. guess that was a secret. And says, we all have our secrets, right, Bree? He then goes through her search history. There's some funny things there, nothing I can repeat. Uh, yeah, we see a shot of uh, Caroline um, entranced by Chucky. Lexi takes her phone and storms off. Chucky says it's fun to laugh at people and starts saying obscenities that get Principal McVeigh to end Jake's performance. That's what we'll call it, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, when Jake gets home, his dad is drinking and mad about him making fun of his friends and family and asks if it bothers bothers you that everybody thinks you're weird. 
Jake replies, you don't care that I think I'm weird. You just care that I think I'm a gay slur. Um, Luke then punches Jake and says if he says that again, he'll kill him. Uh, Jake says it should have been his dad that died in the car accident, not his mom. Luke takes Chucky and sends a bloody nose Jake to his room. Oh, remember a scene ago where this was really fun and silly. Oh, oh yeah. But now it's real and sad. But you know, you it helps rough, you yeah. know make the characters who they are. So, oh. um, Luke goes back to the living room and sees that his whiskey bottle is empty, and we, the audience, see that Chucky is gone. And then the power goes out, and Luke goes to the basement, to the breaker box. Uh, he turns the power back on and sees Chucky in front of him. Chucky spits up whiskey at his feet, hitting exposed wires, electrocuting him to death. Jake comes down to see his dad dying, and then Chucky like sneaks up in like the flashing lights as we go to a really weird commercial jump scare that's never really even brought up in the next scene, so I don't know why it's there other than to be like, ah, oh, what's happening to Jake before we go to commercial? Just point it out. For the most part, I wouldn't say this this show does a lot of cheap things like that, but I felt like that specific one was very, like, cheap. Like, Chucky doesn't do anything to him, but he's, like, right up in his face like he's like, going to as we go to commercial. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, we come, come back from commercial. Uh, <laughs> and Detective Evans and her partner, Detective Peyton, want to question Jake. Uh, Detective Peyton is played by Travis Milne. Detective Evans asks if he knows anything about a break-in at school. He says no. She says the only thing stolen was his Chucky doll. So he apologizes and says he stole it, but, you know, he doesn't do things like that. But he just, you know, he needed to practice for his talent show. Uh, Logan comes to pick up Jake and take him to his house. As Jake is leaving, Detective Evans say, says, what happened to your nose? And Jake lies, saying he fell. Uh, Peyton asks what they're calling it, and Evans replies, Death by Misadventure. For now. Bum, bum. Oh, that was the title, and then she added more to it. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I'm scared. Uh, once at the Wheeler Mansion, uh, <laughs> uh, Jake is taken to his room by Bree. That's uh, one thing, I think, that, like, it leads to really cool sets, but there is a element of, like, why does every person we see after Jake has, like, a mansion of a home? Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, full-on <laughs> mansions we'll see throughout yeah. the series. Um, but, yeah. Once again, I did, once again, it doesn't bother me enough that I care after just thinking about it for, like, half a second. Because it's just, it ends up leading to really cool-looking sets. But, there is a little bit I of, I mean, like, there's, you know, two rich kids... It's not incredibly I mean, unlikely. Yeah, but like the house we see in the next episode, I'm sorry, that's not just a rich kid. That's like a billionaire's house that they go to. <laughs> well, it's in Hackensack, so you know the property value is still lower. <laughs> I, mm, I, fine. Um, so <laughs> his parents are only apparently millionaires. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, once at the Wheeler Mansion, Jake is taken to his room by Bree. Who asks what he meant by saying she had a secret at the talent show. And Jake says he was just trying to be funny and, you know, he didn't mean anything by it. Um, also, as we've seen a little bit before the scene and during at the end of the scene, uh, Junior isn't happy that he's here. Mm. Uh, Jake tells Chucky to talk to him and is about to threaten him when Chucky hits him. Uh, Chucky gets up. In the really cool, really cool uh, display of like where the um, animatronics have gotten, he says the classic "Hi, I'm Chucky." In the uh, Chucky voice with a with uh, with an added obscenity in there. Um, yeah. Jake says he really he really killed him. Chucky says we did it. Uh, we did it, Jake. Chucky says he got what he deserved. And Jake says he wasn't like that before his mom died. At this point, Chucky lets us know that he thought they were talking about the cat. Um, 
which I thought was just, I thought was a classic little Chucky moment of like, like oh he got what he deserved. And then you find out that it's the cat, not he wasn't even talking about uh, Luke yet. <laughs> um, uh, Jake says you really are Charles Lee Ray. Chucky replies, but my friends call me Chucky. He pulls out a knife and says, "Let's talk about the b- bad girl, Lexi." Uh, we cut back to the POV from the intro and find out it was a young Charles Lee Ray with his mom. Uh, young Charles is played by David Colesmith. And Elizabeth Ray is played by Marissa McIntyre. And that's the end of episode one. Thoughts on episode two. Any, <laughs> any thoughts on episode one you want to share real quick before we move on? Oh, I don't know. Um, so I, I, this is this is an unprecedented thing we're doing, so I don't know if maybe we should have at least some slight thoughts. Like, yeah, keep your general. Like, we'll have a big wrap up at the end of episode two. But any, you know, thoughts you want to get out before we go to episode two? Uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, I am first off very excited to be watching this uh series. Fair. Uh. Wasn't sure, you know, how the quality of the mm-hmm. show would be, you know. Uh, but I, I can say with firm confidence that it is, uh, like, really insanely highly polished. Uh, it looks great. The acting, for the most part, is great. Um, the only one who I don't like in that, this isn't even in episode one it's in episode two specifically is uh from oliver that's fair uh, there is like one i can i think i can think of the exact scene you're talking about ex- yeah yeah no i'm sure you can uh because it's bad <laughs> yeah, it's oliver is not a main character thankfully uh yeah no thankfully uh, uh but yeah like everyone else is is pretty great uh i love the way chucky looks in this show uh it is it is very nice very clean uh, yeah, the set pieces in the show, you know, no surprise with uh, our returning, uh, was it Craig Sandals? Yes. Yes. Was our... Uh, yeah, Craig Sandals, our production. production? Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah, As, yeah sometimes my it. brain... You got it right. I did a thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, who designed the other beautiful uh, inside of a mansion. Uh, surprise, he can design more beautiful insides of mansions as well as decrepit houses um oh no yeah i i think my biggest critique of this show so far is yeah that they really just don't know uh what what the life of a 14 year old is like or they know what the 14 year old life is in the year 2022 there is a chance that (laughs) i know old men who don't know that yeah maybe i'm (laughs) out of touch now (laughs) at the ripe age of 27 yeah it's been a while since I've been 14. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness. I yeah. did not enjoy being 14. Fair. All right, yeah, I, mean, I also got picked on like Jake. <laughs> yeah, my, my thoughts are generally relatively the same. Uh, I think this is a great first showing, first episode of a show that I, spoiler, I've seen most of and really enjoy all of what I've seen. Um, and it's just like, it's. I really like the characters. I really think the acting is good. I think the direction... And, like, not specifically, like, the like the show running. I think I really like Don Mancini's vision he has for what he wants to do on the show. I mean, I'm a little bit of a Don Mancini apologist. I'll, you know, say even the things some people don't think are good are good from the man. So, <laughs> are we really that surprised that I like the show that's actually good? Um, the show is just objectively good. Yeah. Um, well, you know, from what I can tell yeah. from the first two episodes I've watched, which Fair. I am... I will also say that I am mad that we're watching this and that I have to watch it two episodes at a time. I mean, I guess I could just binge the whole season and then watch the episodes. You could binge it and come back if you wanted. Feels wrong. Yeah, that's fair. (laughs) (laughs) But Uh, yeah. um, This is a show that I like and I would love to just binge it. It's fair. I did get to binge season one somewhat, so I respect Mm -hmm. that. Um, But yeah, um, my, my thoughts are it's great. Um biggest flaw is that the kids don't feel 14 um uh, but i think they actually are which is really weird the weird thing is i think actually all the actors are like 14 or 15 when this season was filmed so like you know i guess you know i'm wrong 
Uh, but yeah. Well, um, let's uh, move on to our next episode, which is Chucky Season 1, Episode 2, Give Me Something Good to Eat, which is directed by Dermot Dons of Flash, Arrow, Legends of Tomorrow, and Supergirl. He did all of that Arrowverse, a couple episodes here and there. He's a TV, very much a TV director, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Not knocking that. Um, yeah. uh, this episode is written by Don Mancini and Harley Payton of Twin Peaks... Channel Zero, which is where they probably met Don Mancini, and they are the uh, creator of. There's a new. It's a new show that started, like I believe, this year. Reginald the Vampire. Interesting. I am a fan of Channel Zero as well. Mm. Uh, it's a pretty cool show. Cool. I haven't seen it. You check it out sometime. Yeah, maybe. Um, all it our other crew actually. are the same as the last episode, so I'm not gonna re repeat them. Yeah, you know, the only person got to repeat was Don Mancini because he, you know, is now co-writing instead of you know. <laughs> Directing. Yeah, instead of directing and writing, yeah, he's just co-writing. So, but yeah, everyone else, same people, same awesome, amazing people who have been involved for the most part. At this point, everyone's pretty much involved since like Seed. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's open with a flashback to Halloween 1965, where Charles Lee Ray chooses to take a bite from an apple he knows has a razor blade in it to show yeah. that he's, I guess, uh, like masochist. He's a little bit crazy. Yeah. Uh, we head to present day, where in on Hackenslash, Devin warns us that Halloween has a violent history in Hackensack. That's the gist of like the first like minute. Uh, yeah, and then gives us like a really tame yeah history of, of violence. Yeah, a lot of them are very tame. I didn't write down any of the specific examples, but yeah, they are kind of like not what you'd expect. You expect like murder, violence, like when it's like this lady hurt yeah. her hand carving pumpkins, and you're like, wait, really? That's it? <laughs> yeah. Especially with how he mentioned that, you know, Hackensack has a history of murder. Yeah, you understand. And then he's like, yeah, a lady cut her hand real bad last Halloween. <laughs> yeah. Got him. <laughs> <It's> Scary. <laughs> to be fair, he also he produces like a five-minute podcast every week, okay? It's hard. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> uh, in the car ride to school, Jake, um, in isn't used to heated seats um, and Logan is controlling Junior's diet. At school. <laughs> Everyone is talking about Jake. Um, kind of like, you know, gossiping about him and whatnot. Uh, Oliver mm -hmm. gives his condolences and apologizes for his past and invites... And it's really bad. <laughs> yeah, it almost feels like it's like 80 yard over. It's so weird. It's so rough. <laughs> it is so like... A deadpan, yeah. monotone delivery. Um, uh, it yeah. sucks. It uh, is bad. He also invites Jake and Chucky to his Halloween party that night. Uh, Lexi is pissed that Jake wasn't suspended for the things he said. Which, you know, to be fair, is actually fair. Like, she yeah. is horrible from what we've seen and we will continue to see here. She is bad. But she is actually right. He did, like... From what everyone else looking in sees, he, like, cursed a lot on stage and shared her personal information without any permission at all. Yeah. <laughs> he did actually do a bad thing, it looks Which like. Which everyone did applaud. Yeah, everyone loved and applauded, and Chucky specifically called out, like, oh, you're laughing at it. You like laughing at people's pain. <laughs> yeah, you all suck. <laughs> yeah. Um... Uh, but yeah. Lost my place again. Uh, Alexi is Lexi's pissed that Jake is suspended for things he said. Yeah. And he's also kind of pissed that Oliver invited him to the party. Uh, Alexi won't tell Junior what her costume is. Uh, Devin says he's sorry to Jake and says he's been thinking about Jake because his dad died when he was nine, so he knows what he's kind of going through and that he wouldn't have gotten through it without his friends. He then asks Jake if he's going to Oliver's party and if he's bringing Chucky because they really killed together at the talent show. Yeah, and just the, just that. Well, that's the only thing they killed together. Yeah. yeah. Chucky just killed his dad yeah. on his own. And his cat. Yeah. Um, we head to the Wheeler home where maid Annie is cleaning Jake's room including Chucky's face. 
Annie is played by Erica Wood. Downstairs, Chucky pushes Annie into the knives in the dishwasher, killing her. Yeah, because the knives are pointed up. Which, you know, is actually a fallacy that that gets him more clean. Some people believe that, though, apparently. Yeah, those people are dumb. <laughs> I mean, I can see why they'd think it, honestly. Like, I'm not... I've never done that, and I would never have thought to think that. But there is an element of, like, when you put him in the thing, there is, like, more plastic blocking it. I could see why someone could think that it, they wouldn't get as clean. It's not but true. But also, water comes from the bottom of the dishwasher. Yeah, I, could, I still... Like, there is an element of there's more plastic get, hit, getting in the way. I could kind of see it. I'm not saying that it's right, and it's wrong. But I can see why someone might think it. But it doesn't. It ended up leading to Annie's death here because the knives were yeah, sitting up and she got pushed into it. Um, we then get our title card. This time, made of knives and jack o' lanterns. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jake and Junior uh, come home. Uh, Jake knows the new password. Junior does not, which you know, it's just adding more issues between the two of them. Uh, yeah, because Junior is butthurt about. Jake being more at home in his own home than he is. Yep. So when Jake offers Junior a popsicle, it makes Junior even more pissed off because you know how dare he you know try so hard? Stop it! Uh, it's my yeah. house. You don't need to offer me a popsicle. Uh, Jake then discovers Annie and has Junior call nine one one. When Bree and Logan get home, they're distraught because Annie was like family. But when Detective a Evans asks about her, you know, home address or next of kin, they don't seem to know any info on her. Because, you know, I guess she's not family. Well, <laughs> she was like family. Yeah, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say, I actually really think that little, like, there's some dark comedy in, like, the way that how, like... Because I think there's an element of, like, they did care about her. But, like, the dark right. comedy of them being like, she was like family. Oh, who, where, where does she live? Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, the south, south side, I think. Side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Does she have family? Ooh. Logan immediately like, no, she doesn't. And then Brie like, I think she has a brother. <laughs> like, it just shows that they don't actually... They're the rich people who didn't actually take the time to get to know her the way they thought they did. Even if they did care about her in their own way, they didn't care enough about her to get to know her. Yeah. They made popsicles for our son. Yeah. Um... Uh, duh, duh. Logan asks how this happens, um, and Evans says it happens more often than you think. Uh, Detective Peyton explains that it's actually a fallacy that putting your knives blade up get them cleaner. Um, Evans says it's only it only takes a slip, well Peyton adds, or a push, and puts his suspicion on Jake. Uh, Detective Evans explains it couldn't be Jake because the door cam had him and Junior come home together. Uh, Peyton says, unless Junior is an accomplice. Detective Evans asks uh, if Jake or Junior had any issues with Annie. Bree and Logan both kind of offendedly say no. But it does, you kind of see in Bree's eyes that maybe she is starting to wonder, though. She's like, oh, did something happen here? Uh, Jake goes to his room and accuses Chucky, who denies any involvement in Annie's death. Um... Yeah, he, he didn't do it. Um, while he's reading Jake's diary, uh, Chucky says he's not good at writing, and it says he should stick to sculpting. Chucky says you should just call it Devin, Devin, Devin. Uh, Jake tells him to shut up. Chucky says, you know, I have a queer kid. Uh, Jake replies, you have a kid? Chucky says, gender fluid. Uh, Jake asks if he's cool with it, and Chucky says, I'm not a monster, Jake. <sighs> He is. Yeah, he is. And That's honestly, the one time we did see him with this gender fluid kid he was referencing, um, he wasn't very cool with them being gender fluid. Uh, hey, I mean, I, I guess like to, towards the to end, be a boy. To, to be fair, actually, I guess towards the end when the, when they chose to be Glenda to kill people, he was down with it. But it took them being willing to murder for him to be accepting of their gender fluidity. Yeah, uh, really <laughs> what he wanted was for their kid to be down with murder. Yeah, people. he really wanted them to be murder fluid. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but you know, murder, murder sexual. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, but yeah, um, I, I just I think this scene is really funny. Um, this is one of those yeah. scenes that I'm sure there are some people I will address it here because I've saw it literally in like the comp like the reviews for this on Shutter. 
There are people who are mad that this movie, you know, the rainbow cult, as they refer to it, got a hold of Chucky. And to those people, I say you're an idiot. Um, this was made by an openly gay man from the beginning. And since even Bride, he's been putting gay characters in there. <laughs> I can't <laughs> believe the gays got a yeah. hold since of Chucky. For the last 25 years, he's been putting gay characters in there to try to show some representation for an underrepresented group of people that he feels a personal connection to. Yeah, sorry, sorry to break it to, you know, the weird, sh straight only Chucky fans. Yeah, sorry but, to... uh... The person who made Chucky. <laughs> so yeah, sorry to break it to you. The cult of Chucky is the rainbow cult. Deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, I just... <sighs> representation's awesome. I'm glad it's finally there. And it's just... it's. I hate people who aren't willing to just accept that, you know, there's people out there who are different than you. And, yeah. you know, have been making this the whole time. Even the ones you liked were made by the same gay man. So... Yeah. Crazy how that works. <laughs> Also, I really uh, just want to also praise like just the comedy of this like scene of him being like, "Oh yeah, I'm not a monster." Just having Chucky say, "I'm not a monster," and being like, realizing that, oh, you know, the, the manipulation, realizing, oh, J J Jake's gay, so let me try to talk about how I'll. It's the classic like, I have a you know friend of a different race card. He tries to pull here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Oh, my son is gender fluid. Yeah, my son's part of the LGBTQ community. I'm, I'm, I'm cool. It's like, okay, Chucky. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I yeah. can't be homophobic. My yeah. yeah, you're right. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I can't be homophobic. My, my child is gender fluid. <laughs> oh, that's how that works. That's not how that works. <laughs> we can clearly see... Uh, Jake's dad was very much <laughs> not yeah, cool. That's true. Uh, Jake says he is um, a monster and that he killed Annie. Chucky denies it and says, you and me, we only kill people who have it coming. Jake says he doesn't kill anyone and wants Chucky to stop killing people. Um, and Chucky continues saying that, you know, hey, I didn't kill Annie. It was an accident. You know, accidents happen. More often than murder, and way more often than murders committed by supernaturally possessed dolls. I mean, he, it's true. The math adds up. He's not wrong. Yeah. He has a point. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he points out how he could have killed anyone in the house during the last week, including Jake, but he didn't. Um, Jake asks why he hasn't. And Chucky says he's trying to help him. How he got him, look, he got him into this better home, and, you know. He's his only, his one and only real friend, and he didn't kill Annie. And he has his sights on someone who deserves it, deserves to die. Uh, Junior over here is Bree and Logan talking. Uh, Bree is having some doubts about Jake, but Logan thinks she's overreacting. Uh, Ju Jake passes Junior in the hall and goes to the bathroom. Uh, Junior goes to Jake's room and finds Lexi's square picks open on his laptop. Which I just wanted to point out that I understand when, you know, they don't use, you know, like, re like why they don't use Instagram. I get it. But there is a point earlier in the first episode where Lexi in the, s great, like, in, like, the, her dialogue literally says, did you check my, in have you not seen my Insta? And it's like, <laughs> you can't have both. You can't reference Instagram with your dialogue, but then not be willing to pay to show it, or you know, get whatever. Like, you just you can't. Or you, you can't not see my square pics. <laughs> and your thing, if she said that, we would all be like, "What? The, that felt awkward." Uh, and, like, I get why they have to do it, but it just—it's like one of those moments where you go, "Like, oh." Yeah. Well, same thing in like the last movie. Um, I when uh in the Call to Chucky when um. Andy's date says that she googled him but in the previous movie they made a very specific thing to show us that their, their search engine was called internet search not google because you know yeah. couldn't be <laughs> right. but you know it is what it is yay licensing yeah <laughs> uh, but yeah so he sees that her you know square picks is open and he tells Jake to stay away from her um then he leaves, and from the other side of the door, we hear Chucky hit Jake. Uh, we head to the mayor's mansion, which this one, 
I'm, I'm okay with them having a mansion because there's a little, like, a sign in front of it that says, like, the mayoral mansion. Like, the mayor is just being moved into this mansion. It's not that they just are a fourth person, you know, in the world to have a mansion in this one friend group. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Lots of mansions in this, yeah, apparently. In this in city. Hacken, in, the, in the town of Hackensack, New Jersey? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very rich township. I don't know if you know this. Yeah, apparently. Um, the mayor and Mr. Cross are very impressed with Caroline's drawings of Chucky and that she remembers his name. Um, they never say it directly, but it's definitely implied that um, Caroline is probably on the spectrum. Um it's never directly said, but that definitely feels like the characteristic they're trying to give her. Uh, <laughs> there is a line that I don't think I wrote it down later in this scene where uh, Lexi says that she doesn't like that her sister doesn't like to even be touched. Like mm. she's got like almost a photographic memory. She you know doesn't like to be touched. She's kind of distant to people. They don't say it, but relatable. Hey, I mean, hey, I'm honestly happy that that kind of representation is there. But there's also an element of, like, they don't even say it. Which, like, yeah, say it. You know? I don't yeah. know. It's okay to have autism. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it definitely triggers, feels whatever like... Whatever it is. I don't, think it's, I don't think that's the appropriate term. I think it's all yeah. the autism spectrum now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, so she's drawing Chucky, and she remembers his name, so they are both really think it's really cool. Uh, Miss Cross or Mr. Cross says Lexi might be able to, you know, set up a meeting between Caroline and Chucky. Um, and Lexi Ooh. points out that you know Chucky belongs to Jake Willer, who bullied her at the talent show, which she's not wrong. Like here's the thing: does she deserve the bullying? Kind of. Yes. She is such a bad person that she deserved what she got. Yeah. But <laughs> uh, it's not. It is bullying, and her parents, are, her dad, telling, like, "Oh, it was just a joke." It's like okay. Maybe she's kind of right that her parents aren't paying attention to her or care about her. Yeah, definitely. I was uh, kind of doubled down on like a line from now because uh, Mayor Cross shows Lexi the picture and Lexi calls it hideous, which you know mean. But I think she's talking about Chucky itself more so than the drawing. But yeah, which um, is Mayor, a really good drawing it, for a yeah, child. <laughs> yeah, it is a very good drawing that the art director probably did. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Mayor, Mayor Cross says Caroline has a gift and is better at this than Lexi has ever been at anything in her entire life. Yeah. Well, she needs to be humbled. Is the I know, but here's the thing. Lexi's, yeah, she's a mean character, but even this hurt. Like, it hurts to hear someone's like, that's your yeah, daughter. That's her, <laughs> th here's the thing. That's her legit daughter she say that line to. I mean, here's the thing. It's a character, and they're both actors. They're right. both professionals. But <laughs> uh, Lexi... After that, she just, you know, I meant every word that I said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, you know, uh, uh, I forgot her name. I forget. I was going to make a joke, but I forgot the actress's name, so I'll just move on. Uh, Lexi goes to leave to get ready for Oliver's party, uh, but is told she has to take Caroline trick-or-treating. Uh, we get a scene with Detective Evans asking Devin about Jake, uh, but he says they don't really know each other. Before then, immediately, you know, texting him about being at the party. Oops. Jake says he can't come. Uh, Junior leaves to go to the party uh, wearing his dad's old track medals, and I think it might be his uniform. Um, Bree and Logan ask Jake if he's going, and he says no, he's changed his mind. They're also really impressed by his fake black eye he gave himself. Oh. Um, and that they don't know exactly what he's going at. Yeah, and I th was th he said actually a really funny line. Ugh, I forgot what his answer to what he was. He was like a victim of like misunderstanding or something like that. A victim of misfortune. Hmm. Is like his response to what they thought he what he was. It was it was a good line, but I forgot it and I didn't write it down. I'm sorry. Um, I, can't I didn't remember. Uh, he heads back upstairs, but comes down freaking out because Chucky's gone. So now we go to commercial. Um, 
Yeah. So this is where all we're playing at. Just kidding. We don't have ads. Um, outside, uh, Chucky in a Hello Kitty mask goes trick or treating. Uh, he goes up to a nice lady named Gladys and says he'll give her a treat if she tells him where the party is. But if she doesn't, he'll have to give her a trick. Um, she tells him, and he gives her an apple. Oh. Uh oh. I wonder if there's anything inside that apple. Uh, Gladys Ooh. is played by. Jamila Ross of Firestarter, the 2022 remake. Oh, uh, we had to Oliver's Mansion for his Halloween party. Good gosh. This, Third mansion. But this <laughs> is the most mansion of the mansions. Like, this is insane. This. It doesn't well, this look... is the house party mansion, Austin. I mean, yes, for, like, movies where you have house party mansion, not somewhere where I'm supposed, I actually believe anyone lives. I don't believe that Oliver has a family that affords this house, but he goes to public school? There's the biggest flaw in this whole movie. No one who has a house like that goes to public school. You think there's a private school in Hackensack, New Jersey? I think in New Jersey is a small enough state you're going to a different town. <laughs> <laughs> If you have that kind of house, you're hiring someone to personally teach your child at home. <laughs> um, but, you know, whatever. Also, it's a big old party with a bunch of drinking. And by the way, they're 14. Yeah, they are 14. Can't emphasize that enough. No, they are 14. Everyone is drinking. This feels like a very much like a high school party, but they are... I checked my notes. 14. <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, Junior finds Lexi getting high in the bedroom. Um, he tells her to be careful with Jake. She says she's not afraid of Jake, just creeped out by Chucky. He tells her he'll protect her, and she kind of makes makes fun of him uh, before they end up making out. We cut to Jake showing up and running into Devin as he tries to find Lexi. Oliver tricks Jake and Devin into a closet for seven minutes in hell, which doesn't Kind of, ha I get the Halloween theming of it, but it just doesn't sound as good as Seven Minutes in Heaven. Um, uh, we cut to Caroline and Chucky playing a zombie video game, um, and what probably maybe my favorite scene in these first two episodes, um, as Caroline tells Chucky that he's you know good at this, and Chucky says, "You too, Caroline. You got potential." I'll, I always say, "Good, good cl killing is good clean. Yeah, is good clean fun for the whole family." You can kill the housekeeper, you can kill the babysitter, you can even kill your own sister. Caroline responds, Mommy says real killing is bad. Chucky says Mommy is full of obscenity. Caroline says Mommy says it's not nice to swear. And Chucky says Mommy's working her way up his list pretty quick. Um, I just I love this interaction between Chucky and Caroline. <laughs> um, Chucky asks her where Lexi is and Caroline says probably kissing Junior somewhere. I believe Chucky says, you know, she'll, then she'll die doing what she loves. Um, and we head to Junior and Lexi having some issues making out um, as Chucky uh -huh. keeps trying to and missing stabbing Lexi as they kind of keep rolling and getting in different positions on the bed. And Which, once again, creepy thing, just weird wording to have to say about you know characters that are 14. Um, not that yeah, if they were agreed. 17, it'd make it any really better to have to describe that, but still, you get my point. Um... Yeah. Um, but yeah, he keeps missing. Um, and Lexi and Junior end up leaving. Uh, we cut back to the closet, uh, which is not a euphemism or a uh, hidden message here. It's just they are in a closet, literally right now. We are back to the closet where Jake uh, tells Devin he can't tell him what's going on uh, because he won't believe him. Uh, Jake then attacks a doll in the closet. He thinks it's Chucky, but it isn't. Uh, Devin says he had a serious doll problem. Jake says, if you only knew. And the door is opened. They're let out just as Lexi has revealed her costume and is doing an impression of Jake's dad as he died. Yeah, Lexi sucks if you didn't catch that, by the way. Yeah. It was kind of subtle before, but uh, I think it's a little less subtle now. Uh, Jake looks on in disgust. Uh, Junior looks, looks on shocked. Because, you know, this is one thing I will say about Junior we haven't really brought up is there are multiple times where, like, 
he does kind of feel like he has more of a heart. Like, there is... He, he's still kind of a jerk, and he's still not, like, nice to people, like, Jake especially. But, like, he does still try to kind of stop Lexi from going too far and stuff. Like, you can yeah. tell he's not happy with what Lexi is doing right now. He's more of a, a guilty by complicitness kind of yeah. kind of guy. Well, he does his own know, bad instigator. Things, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There even even Lexi seems to realize that she's making a little bit of a mistake because for like a half a second she hesitates uh, before continuing. Um, Jake's yeah. about to leave, but goes back in to confront her. We cut to Gladys with her mouth bloody, telling Detective Evans about Chucky. And so this moment where Detective Evans is like, wait, kind of like realizing that like she's describing Chucky is like at her house on his own, so she's starting to maybe wonder mm, what's going on here. Strange, maybe. Yeah. Uh, Jake finds Lexi with Caroline, and Chucky's about to stab her, but Jake grabs him and leaves. Uh, later in um, his room, Jake's room, Chucky apologizes about giving him a black eye and promises he'll never do it again. Jake says he's heard that before, and another just really painful, quick little line there. Oh. Uh, yeah. Chucky tells Jake some people deserve to die. And Chucky says it's the Super Bowl of Slaughter, and you can't just sit in the stands. It's kill or be killed. I mean, I've cut out like every other like line he says, but this is the gist of it. Um, it's kill or be killed. Sooner or later, everybody's going to choose. And he pulls out his knife. He tells him to kill Lexi before she kills him. Jake says, "I don't know if I can do this." Uh, Chucky tells him to man up, and points out how everybody laughed at Lexi's constant at costume tonight, and he's Jake's only real friend. Jake sits down next to Chucky. Chucky tells him to take the knife. He knows he wants to. Jake takes it. And Chucky congratulates him on going to the Super Bowl. And a shot of Chucky reflecting on the knife that then transitions into, like, Jake turning the knife so it's now his reflection in the knife. Oh. And that's the end of episode two. Bum, bum, bum. Um, yeah, um... Thoughts on this episode is that it's a it's a it's a good episode. It's a, I like the Halloween theme of a lot of it. Um, and then I'll also just transition around just my thoughts of the whole thing, which I kind of already did in the middle there. Uh, it's great. I love the show. I think the acting is really fun. I think the characters are really well written. I I think the kills when we get them, which to very you could that could be a complaint someone might have is there's not enough kills, but you know they paced it out one per episode pretty much is what we're getting right now, and you know I think that's fair. Um, and I think they're they're fun and different enough that I'm okay with you know they're they're not the exact same kills we've seen before which is nice, um, and you know yeah it's it's fun it's, it's more Chucky which I'm 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 happy this exists I'm really happy that you know there wasn't the that you know Child's Play 2019 wasn't popular enough that no I mean like legit, legitimately that Universal didn't pull the plug on this show because it very they very yeah, easily yeah. could have if that show was if that movie was really popular then it could have been like, hey, we don't want two Chuckies right now. We're pulling the plug on Don Mancini's vision for this awesome show that he has. And I'm really happy that didn't happen because, you know, I, I love the man's work. He's, you know, he's he's given me seven movies and a season and a half of TV of what I've seen that I really like. Um, and I'm happy that we got to see this. Um, I, yeah, I really like the new characters we have. I like... Lexi's really good at being that, you know, evil character. I like the kind of, you know, conflicted, you know, side we get from Junior. Jake's a decent protagonist of, you know, just kind of being that victim. Like, and then it's Chucky. You know, you got Chucky. And, like, <laughs> it's great. Um, yeah, I don't want to just keep repeating myself. I really like it, obviously. Are you surprised? No, you're not. Um... <laughs> Yeah, uh, I guess to wrap up my my thoughts on our first section of uh, Chucky, the the series, uh, is that I, I have really enjoyed it. I'm very much looking forward to continuing uh, and watching episode three and four. Um, and uh, yeah, despite the slower pace in terms of like kills. Um, I almost feel like Chucky is, or at least the way that uh, Don Mancini is, you know, telling the story is 
better suited towards television mm. uh, versus a movie. Because, uh, you know, he's got more time to develop a, a story and a plot in the background um, for all these characters. And he's pretty good at writing characters, um, especially in the, in the show. Um, especially, you know, I mean, I feel like Chucky has been pretty well written throughout the movies. Uh, and, you know, I guess he kind of has to because he's one of the few characters that carries on throughout all the movies. Uh, and, you know, Andy was also written really well. Uh, again, you know, one of the longer standing characters. Um, and it just goes to show, you know, how how good he is at what he does. Um, and uh, very excited to see how the show plays out um, and uh, what story it is uh, that Don Mancini has to tell. Uh, very much looking forward to it. Woo, yeah. Um, but yeah, so next week we'll be talking about uh, episodes three and four. I had planned on, you know, knowing what the names of those episodes were. Didn't remember to do that. So, you know, we're watching episodes three and four of season Whoopsie one. Whoopsie poopsie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, if you like this podcast, uh, you know, you can leave a five-star review on any podcast app you use, as long as it's the three we're on. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, Spotify, the Apple Music, and the... Or, Google Play. Uh, Google Play. Mm-hmm. Google Podcasts, even. Yeah, whichever, uh, whatever, that's cool. We're on Google, uh, yeah. we're on Google, we're on Google, Apple, and Amazon. We're on all the companies the last movie was making fun of. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, if you want to watch this as a you, there's like a video version. We're on youtubecom slash at horrorboys. You see our beautiful faces. Yeah, you can see our beautiful faces. You can see I have a Chucky poster and the Chucky Blu-ray set. That's right, I upgraded. Not after Ooh. we covered the Chucky movies, but now I have the Blu-ray set. I also have the Blu-ray set. It's just not in my room. Sorry, That's guys. Um, I also have the Chucky DVD set, also still in my room because I haven't shipped it to our friend isaiah yet <laughs> uh but yeah um if you want to support us directly patreon.com slash whoreboys where we post this podcast early at least a couple days and hypothetically would do more content if you gave us money you want more content Good. hey for 75 dollars i believe which yeah i know it's really crazy but the reason it's so high is because that means you get to you get all the rewards before it, which I don't remember what all of them even are off the top of my head. But the big reward there is you get to decide what the next episode of Horror Boys is on. I'm just saying, hey, if you want to give us $75, you can decide what the next episode of Horror Boys is. We'll stop talking about Chucky for a week and cover whatever random movie you tell us to as long as it's a horror movie. You can alter our content. Yeah, you could make me have to go through hours of pain redoing the schedule. And hey, maybe that's what you're into. Uh <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, we'll be back next week to talk about Chucky. I'm really excited. I'm Austin, joined by Chris. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>